What's up everybody, this is John with John Fair Innovations and I'm so excited to bring you today's video. So today's video actually comes from an article I was reading from the Sydney Morning Herald where they were reporting about the standardised test given to high school students that are moving towards university. Now this test, the math one in particular, has come under a lot of scrutiny for potentially being unfair or too difficult to the students. Many teachers, parents and students are very quite upset about it. Now. Today, I'm not going to be talking about my own opinions, whether I do or don't think it was too difficult for the students, but I have two reasons as to why I'm doing this video. So in that same article, and the link for that article is in the description below, so if you do same article, and the link for that article is in the description below, so if you do want to check it out, do make sure you do. But in that article, they posted a few questions. Now I'm going to um, picking one in particular because I think it is a great question for um, people to learn if they are wanting to progress further with their university studies for further mathematics. So I, that's why I want to show how you would answer this question. But also for people who do or don't have uh, opinions about whether or not you felt it was too difficult or not, this will give you a better understanding of what the student had to do to answer the question correctly. So it gives you a better idea of whether you think a high school... Alright, so let's get into it. So what we got was a long paragraph which shortened down basically was that you have a, a decagon with all equal sides and the perimeter was 80 centimeters. So using this information, find the area for the decagon. Now, if you are a math nerd like me, you would probably just use this formula here to find the area of a decagon. But of course, I mean, most people would not use that, and in fact, I would not expect any high school student or most university students to even know this formula exists. So we're not going to be using that one today. But what we are going to be using are geom geometrical and trigonometry uh, identities, principles, techniques to be able to solve this problem. So basically what the student would have had to have done. Okay, so we can see that it's equal sides Perimeter just means the length all the way around. So we know that each side all together, if we add all 10 up together, it's going to equal 80. So then we can come to the conclusion that each, each section has to have 8 centimetres because 80 divided by 10 would give you 8 centimetres. So we can see that each section of our decagon around the outside is 8 centimetres. So now what we're going to have to do is sort of break it up a little bit. Because what we know about area is that you can add multiple smaller areas to a larger one and you will get the same answer. So for example, if you have a square, you could work out two triangles within it and add them together and that would give you the same answer as working out the square on its own. So we're going to actually use this principle of additional areas in order to solve this one. Now we're told that they're all even. So that's why we can say that each one around the side has to be eight centimeters. And what we can actually do is create triangles. So if we create two lines and we join it into the middle section, which again was information given to the students in the question, that you can actually make a triangle like this. So we can actually make 10 of these, can't we? Because they're all even. So now let's look at the triangle individually, because then we can just what we do is we'll work out the area of the triangle and then we'll multiply it by 10 because we're going to have 10 of these. So let's look at the triangle individually. So we can see there that the triangle has a base of 8 centimetres. Now our formula for finding the area of a triangle is half of a base times height. Well we have our base but we don't have the height. So we're going to have to use a little bit of geometry in order to solve it. So let's look back at our decagon with all our triangles in it. Now, what happens if I create a little circle in the middle? Well, what we've actually got are angles. So we can actually work out the angle of that part of the triangle for each of them because they're going to be even. And we know that the, that the degrees of a circle is always going to be 360 degrees. And remember, just like our sides on the outside, there's, this is being split up into 10 sections because we have 10 triangles. So to work out the degrees of this part of the triangle, 
we would take our 360 degrees and divide it by 10. And that will give us 36 degrees. So now we have a triangle that has a base of eight centimeters and we have a top angle that is at 36 degrees. So what we can actually do is split the triangle in half. And now we're going to use a little bit of trigonometry because the reason why we're splitting it in half is because we wanna make a right angle triangle. Keep in mind that it's an isosceles triangle, so both sides are even, so if I cut the middle, it's gonna create a perfect right angle triangle, and they're gonna be both identical of one another. So we have a base now, each of these bases is going to be four centimeters, because I cut it in half. And our degrees is cut in half, so each of these is going to be 18 centimeters. So now what we do is we look at the one of the right angle triangles and we can use our tan formula in order to work out the height because that's the one that we want. We want to work out how uh, the height of our triangle. And the formula for this is tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. And what we're talking about when we're talking about opposite and adjacent is in regards to the angle. So we can see, for example, that the opposite side of our angle is our four centimeters. And our adjacent side is the one that we're trying to work out. And our angle is obviously going to be 18 degrees because remember it was half of 36. So what we do now is, and hopefully you're still with me, is we use this formula to work it out. So what we're going to have to do is rearrange our formula so that the x, or that the, the height, in this case, is on its own, because that's the one that we're trying to work out. So we've got 10, 18 equals four divided by x. So what we do is we rearrange. So firstly, we have to get rid of this fraction. So we're going to have to take the x from one side of the equation and move it to the other side of the equation. And in algebra, if you take something from one side to the other, it does the opposite. So it's dividing by x on this side, so it's going to multiply by x on the other side. So that's gonna give you x multiplied by 10, 18 equals four. And now we do the exact same process to get rid of the 10, 18 onto the other side. So it's multiplying on this side, so on the other side, it's going to divide. So that's gonna give us x equals four divided by 10, 18. And then when you plug this into your calculator, it's gonna give you an answer of roughly 12.31 centimeters. So that means we've got our height now for our triangle. So now we can work out the area of the triangle because we've got a base and we've got a height. We've got a base of four centimeters and we've got a height of 12.31 centimeters. Now what I'm actually gonna do is to save time is I'm going to put this, I'm going to join the two right angle triangles together because the height's not gonna change, is it? So what we're going to get now is uh, the triangle, the original one that we cut out, which has a base of eight centimeters and a height of 12.31. And now we put this into our area of a triangle formula. So that's gonna read now as, as, because remember it was half of a base times height. So it's gonna read as half multiplied by 12.31 multiplied by eight. And then when we multiply this one out, it's going to give us an answer of 49.24 centimeters. And remember, this is one out of our 10 triangles. So to work out the total for our decagon, we would multiply this by 10. And that will give you a final answer of 492.4 centimeters squared. Keep in mind it's centimeters squared because that was the units given to us. It was given to us in terms of centimeters. So an area would be centimeters squared. So there you have it. This is how you would tackle that problem. So basically what you have to do is you have to try and sort of manipulate the shape to be in the form of something that, something smaller, something simpler that you can solve. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that. As I said, do practice this. So if you wanna maybe try this with maybe a different shape, maybe a hexagon, for example, a six-sided shape, maybe a little bit smaller, maybe even like maybe a eight-sided shape, like an octagon. It's the same principle. You're basically trying to manipulate the shape in order for it to be what you need it to be so you can answer it easier. Well, that's it for me today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Always stay safe, be kind to one another, and I'll see you next time.